Hi, everybody. This is Father Moki Hino coming to you from Good Shepherd Episcopal Church and the Chicken Coop. Today is Thursday, August 3rd, 2023, and this is Chicken Chat. And I want to assure you that as I look outside onto the courtyard, there are two chickens and five chicks. So, um, just to prove my point. So, anyway, uh, it's very hot in here today. It's very hot in Wailuku. I know in, in Kahului today it's going to be 90 degrees, so you can tell by looking at my shirt uh, that it is very warm, and I wanted to show you this so that you didn't wonder. I'm not sick or anything like that. I'm fine. I'm just hot. Um, changing to a, a little more somber note uh, just for a minute here. I got a message from Bishop Emmeline de Kui Kui, the IFI bishop in the Diocese of Batak. And uh, she, she wrote and she said, um, all our parishes right now are without electricity, internet, water. And she said they have just suffered the worst typhoon in Ilocos Norte in 10 years. Uh, evidently there's a lot of flooding uh, and the like and I had no clue because uh, Dixie and I have been in New York that there was anything like that happening in the Philippines so I was caught a little bit unawares. Uh, the name of the typhoon in the Philippines is Typhoon Egay, E-G-A-Y. Um, before it enters Philippine space and after it leaves Philippine space, it goes by the name Doksuri. So if you hear of Typhoon Doksuri, it's the same as Typhoon Egai. So she just wanted to let me know. Uh, she wasn't soliciting anything or anything. She, she really, I think, just wanted prayers. But now that we've established this wonderful connection based on uh, our trip, uh, Dixie and my trip uh, in June, I would like to take up a special collection this coming Sunday to help with the relief efforts uh, in that area, knowing that uh, many of our congregants have family and friends uh, in Batak, in Lawag, uh, in Cagayan. So uh, let's take up a second collection this Sunday uh, to, to help uh, with their relief efforts. Okay, uh, so I'll also mention that in Chicken Scratch when it goes out tomorrow. I would like to announce that I do believe the worship committee is meeting at 9 o'clock this Saturday in the rectory. That's uh, Saturday, August the 5th. Also, uh, Mrs. Josefina Sagayaga passed away uh, while Dixie and I were in New York. It was a very sudden uh, passing. I was with the family after church on Sunday. We had a good visit, uh, said some prayers, and uh, discussed funeral arrangements. The funeral will be on, I'm going to flash up the date because I can't remember it right now, but it will, oh, August 7th, Monday, August 7th at Norman's Mortuary at 1130, 1130. Uh, so, um, anyway, so please keep uh, the Saga Yaga family in your prayers. Um, it's It's hard to lose somebody suddenly. It was good for Nana Josefina, uh, because she didn't suffer very much, but it's hard on the family, you know, when you don't have time to prepare to lose someone, and I understand that because uh, I lost my father and my grandfather, both of them, very suddenly, so um, I, I appreciate what they're going through. I would like to clarify um, Wednesdays. Uh, the Bible study Eucharist. You know, we're, we're experimenting with things and getting things sorted out, and we've discovered that um, it's easier to start at 4.15 with the Bible study, end at 5.15, and have a 15-minute break instead of a half-hour break um, before we start the Eucharist. And it's also easier to have the Eucharist in St. Matthews. So uh, we, we are going to continue to offer that with the caveat that uh, 
when I'm traveling, uh, we go on hiatus unless we can figure out another provision for the Eucharist. So uh, we're going to start at 415 in St. Matthew's with the Bible study, end the Bible study at 515, stay in St. Matthew's, set up and have Eucharist in St. Matthew's. Uh, if you have any questions about that, reach out to me by uh, email or text, okay? Uh, also, this coming Sunday, we are uh, celebrating the Feast of the Transfiguration, where Jesus goes atop Mount Tabor and is transfigured <coughs> before the eyes of the disciples. Uh, we did, Dixie and I, <coughs> just return from New York City, where it was so incredibly hot and it was scary because we'd go out we walk very slowly hydrate it was hot 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 and then all of a sudden the skies would just turn gray and it would start having thunder and lightning and uh you know i don't like being out in lightning so that was that was kind of scary but while while we were there we did see here lies love the musical by david byrne from the talking heads about the life of imelda marcos and dixie and i were on the dance floor and dancing away with mrs marcos and president marcos and ninoy aquino and all all these uh characters <laughs> And then Lea Salonga was there uh, playing the role of Doña Aurora Aquino, who was the mother of uh, Benigno Aquino. So uh, anyway, it, it was really, really good fun and an interesting insight into Philippine history. So um, anyway, uh, speaking of the Philippines, we, Dixie and I, are about to do a mad dash to prepare for our next trip to the Philippines on August 21st when we will be going to the Episcopal Diocese of Santiago which is uh, located in Ifugao uh, right on the border of Isabella uh, will be gone from August 21st through September 5th and uh, looking forward to that trip it's going to be a little different uh, than this last one but I think equally rewarding and fun. Uh, we did have uh, quite a wonderful uh, worship uh, experience uh, this past weekend. Uh, we had a big crowd on Sunday morning and actually a pretty decent crowd on Saturday uh, afternoon also. It was full of spirit. And uh, on Sunday morning, there was a couple uh, visiting from San Mateo, California, who were here on their honeymoon and decided to come to Good Shepherd Church before they got on the plane to go home. So uh, that was really, really nice. Um, also, I do want to remind you that the vestry has come to the very difficult decision that the monkey pod tree on the commercial properties has to come down. Uh, the monkey pod tree in the office courtyard is going to be trimmed back, but it will stay up. So um, it, it, it's hard, folks, but the, the roots of the one in the commercial properties are starting to go under the foundations of the buildings. So uh, we've got to do what we've got to do. I would like to thank the Brown family for taking care of Ka'ohana Kitchen. I understand they serve some really good lasagna. And um, when we looked out from the rectory over at the parish hall, there was a huge line of people. So I think a lot of people showed up for that, especially because it was the last Sunday of the month, you know, and that's when welfare checks uh, dwindle and run out. I would like to thank in advance Santa Evangelista and her team for taking care of Ka'ohana Kitchen uh, this coming Sunday, August 6th. Uh, now, uh, let's take a moment, please, to pray for everyone on our pastoral care prayer list. Let us pray. Irenio, Eric, Purificacion, Marianne, Nelly, Mary, Joyce, Ewell, Iris, Paula, Margie, Lydia, Velma, Phil, Judy, Lucille, Tom, Teula, Catalina, 
Maggie, Shirley, Dolores, Jerry, Catherine, Robert, Jacinta, Arthur, Jim, Jose, Timothy, Gary, Jan, Lehua, Serene, Chat, Elizabeth, Joel, Nelson, Arnell, Mercedes, Lisa, Mo Marilyn, Ernesto, Randall, Dale, Rochelle, Chris, Alfredo, Saga Yaga family, Brian, Sandy, Cora, Barbara, Charlesta, Brianna, Dan, Gabby, Lynn, Tomo. May the blessing of light be on you, light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine on you like a great peat fire, so that a stranger and friend may come and warm itself at it. And may light shine out of the two eyes of you like a candle set in the window of a house, bidding the wanderer come in out of the storm. And may the blessing of the rain be on you. May it beat upon your spirit and wash it fair and clean and leave there a shining pool where the blue of heaven shines and sometimes a star. And may the blessing of the earth be on you, soft under you as your feet pass along the roads, soft under you as you lie out on it, tired at the end of the day. And may it rest easy over you when at last you lie out under it. May it rest so lightly over you that your soul may be out from under it quickly, up and off and on its way to God. And now may the Lord bless you and bless you kindly. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. That is a Scottish prayer uh, that I like to use from time to time because I think that it is just so, so incredibly uh, beautiful. So um, it's, it's a little long, but it's a really, really nice prayer. And I, I love the idea of, you know, coming and warming yourself by the peat fire and letting the the light of God shine out of your eyes, you know. So um, anyway, I just think it's a beautiful prayer, especially for healing, because it, it sums up pretty much the whole uh, journey of life. And I, I was thinking of Mrs. Saga Yaga as I was praying that, and you know how we pray that the earth lie easy over her so that her soul can be up and off and on its way to God. And I, I guess I share that with you because I want us to understand that death is not a failure. It's part of human life. And so uh, we, we acknowledge that the death of somebody like uh, Nana Josefina, who was older and lived a good life, is actually a very, very beautiful thing. Uh, with that, I would like to share with you that this week we will be praying for the p following people in our prayer calendar for lesser feasts and fasts. The first being John Mason Neal, who was a priest and hymnographer, Catherine Winkworth, who was a poet, Dominic, who was a priest and friar, you know, like uh, the Dominicans, <laughs> named after Dominic. Edith Stein, philosopher, monastic, and martyr. I have more to say about her in a moment. Lawrence, deacon and martyr at Rome. He died like uh, very early on in the history of the church. Claire, abbess at Assisi and a very, very good friend of St. Francis. Florence Nightingale, nurse and social reformer. Uh, you know, I, I look through these uh, names and I, I do a little reading on them and I found uh, that uh, this uh, person here, Edith Stein, who was a philosopher and monastic, I wondered why she was a martyr in 1942. And then um, I read a little bit and realized that that was because she was in the Netherlands during World War II. Uh, she was um, a German Jewish philosopher and then she converted to Roman Catholicism and she wanted to and became a discalced Carmelite nun. Discalced meaning they don't wear shoes, they go around barefooted as a sign of humility and poverty. Um, the Catholic Church canonized her as a saint and a martyr. Why? Okay, so 
she was born into a very observant uh, Jewish family and um, then she became an atheist in her teenage years. Uh, she, she rebelled and then uh, she wanted to pursue a degree in philosophy and then in her studies were interrupted by World War I and uh, she served as a Red Cross nurse and uh, worked in an infectious disease hospital and um, then she completed her dissertation in uh, 1918 and then she because she was doing this dissertation on the problem of empathy she started reading works of people like Teresa of Avila, who was the founder of the Carmelite order, and be, she, be, based on what she was reading, she was drawn to the Catholic faith, and then she was baptized on January uh, 1st, 1992, and she became a Roman Catholic, and um, she taught at a Catholic school in Spire, where Dixie and I went in November, and um, then she was required in 1933 to provide a certificate uh, called an Aryan certificate. In other words, she had to prove that she was part of the Aryan race, and if you could not prove that you were part of the Aryan race, uh, you were persecuted. Um, and because she couldn't produce that certificate, she lost her teaching position and she went into the convent and became a Carmelite nun who was discalced, wore no shoes. And then um, she feared for her life uh, because she was in Germany and she couldn't produce the Aryan certificate, so she fled to the Netherlands. Um, where she thought she would be safe, but we know from the story of the Diary of Anne Frank that uh, you were not safe in the Netherlands, and they caught her and sent her to Auschwitz with her family, and uh, she was sent to the gas chamber on the morning of August 7th, 1942. So uh, we remember and pray for uh, Edith Stein, philosopher and monastic. Very, very sad story. And uh, let's, let's all hope that we learn uh, lessons from the past and history and uh, uh, dare not repeat them ever again. That, that's my prayer for, for the church uh, this week and today, anyhow. All right. Uh, Gee, a lot of heaviness going on today. You know, uh, nuns who get sent to Auschwitz, uh, typhoons in Ilocos Norte, uh, the death of a member of our congregation, Mrs. Saga Yaga. So let's end on a light note. Uh, so I would like to share with you the chicken of the week. And I was so fascinated, uh, brothers and sisters, because uh, while we were in New York, we were walking through Central Park and I saw nene geese. They were all over Central Park, these nene geese. And so I was just amazed, you know, I, I, I thought this is wonderful. The, the nene geese are spreading all over the world and uh, becoming prolific. Um, and so uh, we, we found uh, several geese in Central Park and we took a video of them for all of you to see. And so we would like to name the chicken of the week, the geese of the week, and name them Nene. Now, all of you, please, you know that I know that Nene are only in Hawaii. I'm trying to be humorous and funny here so that we can end on a light note. So, congratulations to Nene, the geese of the week. Take care, everybody. God bless.